producing these guys would be a dream of mine. Again, it's a species I have never... Oh, jeez. Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. As always, I'm going to wish you guys an amazing day. I really hope it is for you. I'm going to have the best day I possibly can. I try to wake up every day with that mentality, and I want you guys to. As a matter of fact, it's pretty cool. We caught Ivy in the act of shedding, my big anaconda. So we're going to time lapse her, see her shed out. I think it's going to be pretty cool. So why don't we go ahead and roll that footage? I tell you, that is so awesome. It's not common to catch any snake in the act of shedding. Uh, to catch an anaconda is even more special. And it's just so cool to think they literally just crawl out of their skin like that. I mean, it is amazing to watch. I mean, no hands. I mean, it's just cool. So what I think I'm gonna do is go ahead and grab Ivy out right now and get her out and then we'll actually look at the shed too. And oh my goodness, that snake is spectacular. I mean, take a look at her. Fresh shed, unbelievable. Come on, little monkey. Ugh, not such a little monkey anymore. I'm gonna be telling you what, this is one big snake and she's only getting larger. Ugh, uh, uh, here you go, baby girl. All right. I told you guys, she's my therapy animal. She's amazing. I love this snake, and I've never had a snake that I've trusted more than I trust this snake. I mean, I never once think she's gonna do anything because she is just such a curious, beautiful snake. I mean, this thing is incredible, and she's only gonna get bigger. I tell you what, I'm not gonna lie, guys. It's a little hard to hold this animal even at this size, and think about the fact that she's gonna get two to three times this weight here just in the next year and a half or two years. I mean, it is gonna be crazy. I'm gonna miss this right here, her kind of being on me, but I know that I'm gonna still be able to lay in her cage or lay on the floor and she's gonna climb all over me, even if she's a lot heavier than I can actually pick up. But I'm gonna kind of enjoy the time I have now with my girl, Ivy, when I can pick her up. Let's go ahead and take a look at this beautiful shed. There you go, girl. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put her back, let her climb around. I just can't believe how good she looks after that shed. And then I'm gonna just kinda get this shed out of here. But like I said, it looks like another gorgeous shed from my girl Ivy. Just take a look at that shed right there. And you can kinda just peel it. You think, they actually turn their shed inside out. That's how they do it. When they're crawling out, this is actually the outside here, and this is the inside right here. So it's pretty interesting how they just kinda climb out and it curls around them. But let's just lay this out and get an idea of how long the shed is. Now keeping in mind, I've said this a million times, the length of a shed is not the length of a snake because the shed not only flattens out, but it also is a little bit stretchy. But nevertheless, that has gotta be a good 15 foot shed right there. She's probably about 10 and a half, maybe coming at about 11 foot right now. So that is pretty amazing. She looks incredibly good. And you know, now that she sheds, that only can mean one thing. In the next couple days, you guys are gonna get an anaconda feeding video. <laughs> and you might say reptile people have one thing in common, and we're kind of obsessive is what's going on. So I'm gonna do an unboxing of an animal that I've been getting a few of lately, and uh, I just keep getting more of them because I can't stop getting them. And that is some more little baby lychee geckos. Oh my God, I tell you, every time I get these guys, I freak out at how cute they are. I forget how cute they are because they grow so quick. I mean, literally the ones that we got just, what, four or five weeks ago are like twice the size already. Look at how crazy cute they are. And every time we bring out Big Bertha or Reptar here at the Reptile Zoo, and they're big, you know, they're relatively big animals that they just blow me away and to think that they start this size is absolutely incredible so i was able to get six more grand torino females so 
that just adds to our GTs, right? Because the GTs are the ones that are like the big ones, right? And there's a bunch of different localities like the Yeti and stuff like that that are really, really large. All the largest ones are the localities from GT, which is called Grand Torino. And again, then when you get into like some of the smaller, kind of more insular islands, uh, they stay smaller. Like we have a bunch of Bosi Island ones, like Reptars of Bosi Island. It's gonna stay about maybe half the size of a GT. So these are all GTs and there is six little females to it, which adds to our group. I think that we have six females now. So now we're gonna have 12 female GTs, which I just absolutely love to death. And each one of these guys looks so incredible. This one's cool. I've got to, oh my gosh, they're all really beautiful. But this one's neat because it's got a lot of green on it. Think of walking through the woods and seeing this little monkey right here. And listen, listen. Can you hear that? They actually vocalize. That's what's interesting about geckos is they have vocalization. And this one is a feisty little monkey. But like I mentioned, you know, if you were walking through the woods and saw a mossy tree and this thing was on it, there's no way you would ever see it. I mean, it would blend in so much. This one is definitely a cheeky little monkey to say the least, I tell you what. But it is so cool to see these guys come in and to think we're gonna set them up. And I've been talking about the fact that we're gonna be setting up a new Caledonian room right by the pot podcast room. So that room is going to be all for lychees and chihuahuas and crested and gargoyle geckos and that's where these guys are going to go. So this is going to be really cool. It's going to be like a mini reptarium as well. So we're going to make a you know, cool backdrops just like the reptarium but downstairs in a little new Caledonian room. And by the way if you guys are interested in the future there will be Bruce and Jessica tours that are available at the reptarium.com and that is probably going to be the only way you're going to see the new Caledonian room to be totally honest with you because it's going to be down there. It's going to look like the reptarium but it's not open to the public as of yet, so you can't get that if you want to see because Jessica is going to be Jessica's domain, if you know what I mean. Regardless, six more baby GT leeches. I am stoked. We teamed up with HelloFresh again to uh, make an awesome meal and save you guys some money, you know what I mean? And today, I'm going to make pork sausage spaghetti bolognese. Uh, the thing I love about HelloFresh, is, again, is that I don't have to be a chef to make something so amazing. I could never make something like that without this. Super easy, uh, five star recipes more than any other meal kit out there. And again, it's just step by step. One, two, three, four, five, six steps. Seven step is in my mouth, you know what I mean? So let's see what we have here. We have some sweet Italian pork sausage. We have some uh, noodles. Got some water cooking right over there. We've got, uh, let's see, we got some marinara. You always need that for spaghetti. We've got some zucchini. We've got some more pasta pasta. Let's see, we got, uh, you certainly can't have Italian food without garlic, you know what I mean? So we got a couple little garlic cloves here. We've got some uh, Tuxin heat spice, ooh. That sounds pretty good, and again, I love it because it's super simple, guys. I mean, literally, you order it, it gets here, that's it, you follow the directions. It's super simple. It's, you know, listen, I don't have time to waste going to the grocery store, I don't like thinking about what I'm gonna eat, stuff like that. So I just get this stuff shipped here. And you guys know I've been getting HelloFresh personally for probably like two years now. And I absolutely love it. Tons of really delicious food. And listen, most of them are under 30 minutes to prepare. Uh, in some cases, you can do quick meals for under 20 minutes. This particular one, uh, let me see really quick here, says 25 minutes. I can definitely do this in 25 minutes rather than spending a half an hour, 40 minutes at the store buying all this stuff, then coming home and cooking it and trying to figure it out. So let's just jump into it, go into step number one. So I obviously always wanna uh, wash my veggies up, make sure they're nice and good. Then we're gonna actually just cut the ends off like this, super simple. You know, I, I look like a chef here, don't I? It look like I know what I'm doing. Just cut the ends of the zucchini. And I actually like zucchini and I love Italian food, so uh, we are good here. I do have to mince up some garlic, a little bit of a, uh, you know, you go like this with the knife, bam, like that. Peels off really nicely, and then we'll just mince this garlic up. And by the way, for those of you guys that have ever worked with garlic, uh, you tell, you know, your hands smell like garlic afterwards, I've got a good little tip for you. Stainless steel knife, wash your hands with the stainless steel knife underwater, it takes the smell off. So uh, I think Martha Stewart actually told me that. Well, she didn't tell me that, I saw it on the show. And the thing I like again, you know, you know, I love animals, I love wildlife, I love the world, I love nature. Uh, so the thing that's nice about HelloFresh, there's about 25% less carbon impact on the environment than if you go to the grocery store. And that's for a couple reasons. Number one, almost all of their packaging is either recycled or able to be recycled 
that's a really good thing. Not to mention that there's less waste, right? When you go to the store and you buy a meal, you never know how much you want to buy. They send exactly how much you need each meal, so there's not as much waste, right? It's good for the environment. Let's get this pasta in the water. There's something for everyone, including low calorie, vegetarian, and family friendly recipes each week. You can save up to 28% using HelloFresh versus grocery store shopping. And the flexibility is great. You can add extra dinners, lunches, or weekly order, throw in extra proteins, or add yummy meal components like HelloFresh best-selling garlic bread. Easily change your delivery days or food preferences, or skip a week whenever you need. HelloFresh is committed to giving back. HelloFresh donated over 2.5 million meals to charity in 2019, and this year is stepping up their food donations amid the coronavirus crisis. All right, time to give uh, this bad boy a try again. Let's 25 minutes for this, so let's see how it is. Mm. Mm. I tell you what, guys, HelloFresh did it again. And right now, I've got savings for you. Use my code 80 Brian B to get a total of $80 off, including free shipping on your first box with a purchase. Go to HelloFresh.com to redeem for more details. Trust me, guys, I've been using these guys for a long time. You need to do this, so go ahead, hit them up you guys will not be disappointed. It's been forever since I've updated you on these guys. These look kind of like the Mexican black kings, right? Those jet glossy black Mexican king snakes. But these are actually African house snakes. They're actually the black African house snakes. And they look, again, just like the Mexican black kings, but they stay a little smaller. And they're obviously from Africa as opposed to Mexico. I love these things. And again, another high production animal. These guys will, again, have four, five, six clutches per year. So it's really cool. We have have two pair of these raising up. They won't be ready to breed this next year in 2021, but probably in 2022, we'll finally get a chance to breed these guys. Absolutely stunning, super cool snakes. Always love African house snakes because they actually look more like a little python than they do a colubrid. So it's really cool and they are doing well and look fantastic. Someone recently asked me to show off Rico, the black tail Kribo, and I realized that I haven't had him in the vlog in a long time. Again, Kribos are a cool animal for sure. Very intelligent fast moving you can see he's always on the go and kind of all of the dry markon which is the kribos and indigos kind of fast moving animals they're always kind of on the go and he is a beast too he's a big big thick black tail kribo absolutely incredible i tell you i've been trying to breed this guy for the last couple years and haven't had any success so hopefully with any luck this year we'll get some good eggs we've had bad eggs the last two years so let's hope rico does his job this year because producing these guys would be a dream of mine again it's a species i have never oh jeez species i swear to gosh i thought he was gonna bite my nose off or something it's a species that i have never bred before and uh rico is absolutely insane hope i can uh get some babies of him this year i've mentioned to you guys in the past that we're just wrapping up the breeding season we still have two clutches of eggs still to be laid in ball fight that's but we're already gearing up for the next breeding season here in about a month and a half we'll have our first males and females together the thing that's always exciting every year is the possibility i mean 2020 was an amazing breeding season where we literally had almost everything that we hoped to breed breed and produce eggs it was the best percentage breeding season we ever had now we're gearing up for the new season and we always have new animals up to size which is always exciting right because you have new males new females there you're like oh my god I just want to show you guys a handful of those males again we have a whole bunch of them up but gosh just take a look at a few of these right here this is actually a banana and she sinny pinstripe oh my gosh just look at the colors on that animal it's absolutely glowing again because these are all incomplete dominant mutations in here i can breed this to almost anything maybe i take it to a three or four banger female that doesn't have any of these genes and could potentially prove some crazy stuff certainly maybe into orange dream maybe into another and she so we can get some super entry stuff nevertheless really really love the way that this one turned out and then of course there's this guy here this is actually the banana super chocolate now we did have another one of these last year that did some breeding this one is even more spectacular i mean unbelievable the purples in this animal now you understand why i thought that there could be a barney ball python right because the purples in this super chocolate banana was so crazy i thought if you just took the yellow away it would be all purple turned out that that wasn't the case but we are still working on it and speaking of the barney ball python we will have this one up to size this is actually a pastel barney ball python so it's the pastel super chocolate pinstripe banana it's again very yellow not a lot of purple but it has the gene 
jeans, that purple jean. So we're gonna probably take this into something like a cinnamon or a black pastel, maybe a GHI, something with a really dark morph to try to get another dark morph layered in here, hoping that the purple even pops more. This little monkey is gorgeous. This is actually a Puma, which is the spark and yellow belly, but it's also a McKinsey jean. So we can start getting that McKinsey, the Puma, the spark, the yellow belly into other animals. So again, really beautiful male. I have some big plans for this guy. And take a look at this little monkey right here. This is actually a pastel bamboo vanilla Woma ball python. I mean, whoo -hoo, doggy, that thing is so gorgeous. I can imagine getting this into some beautiful females and making some wicked combinations. I'll be honest, this one has a lot of high hopes. It's just a Woma pinstripe, right? But it's actually a hat paint. And we're gonna be taking that to a paint female. We could potentially produce Woma lesser paints, lesser paints, Woma paints, all kinds of stuff like that. So I'm really excited that this male will be up to size to breed back to a paint female. This is actually a bumblebee Enchi orange dream. So again, pastel spider, orange dream, and Enchi. That thing is crazy. And you guys know I love orange dream stuff and I wanted to get more orange dream. Finally, we're gonna have another male that we can breed to a bunch of different things to continue to grow the orange dreams in our colony. I couldn't be more excited about this animal here. This is a brand new gene that we're working with that has this super like orange weird look to it. This is a cinnamon, but it also is that new gene. So it's a cinny new gene animal and it's just got wild colors and I have no idea. This is something brand new. We don't even know for sure what it is. We think it's incomplete dominant, but we'll find out this year when we breed it. But wow, this male is going to be up to size and he's definitely going to have some action this year. And honestly, I could sit here all day and just show you the new animals that are going to be up to size, but this one is definitely going to be a good one too. This is actually a killer clown leopard. So a leopard killer clown and it's just absolutely wonderful. So it's a super pastel, it's a clown and it's a leopard. It's going to go to a lot of different clown females. Definitely going to make some cool animals from that. Again, have so many more animals up to size. This 2021 breeding season with ball pythons is going to be a ripper. And although I'm still wrapping up 2020, I can't wait to jump into 2021 because it's going to be epic. So we're really retooling this whole kind of uh, bug wall, the spiders, arachnids, all different stuff. And I think that this is the coolest little enclosure we have because uh, if you look in here, it doesn't look like there's anything. Oh, look at these dead leaves are just blowing around a little bit right here. That's the only thing. Wait, are those dead leaves? No, actually, these are not dead leaves. These are little ghost mantids. Look at this little thing right there. Oh my goodness, these things are so, oh my gosh. They are so absolutely adorable. And we actually have a handful of these ghost mantids in here. Again, we have to do a little bit better job of probably telling people that they're in here because I'm sure a lot of people probably don't even know they're there. And the ghost mantids are probably the most commonly kept mantid when it comes to the pet trade just because they're easy. They're relatively long lived. You gotta remember mantids as a general don't live a long time, but females can live up to eight months. Males are a little bit shorter. They are sexually dimorphic. Females get a little bit bigger. Males stay a little bit smaller. Nevertheless, look at how cute they are. And they, they'll literally fight each other too. They'll like kind of box at each other. They're super cool. And one of my crew members, Jay, not Jay Camera Guy, but the other Jay, actually breeds these. So uh, as these get older and unfortunately will pass away, he's gonna give us more and we'll always keep these ghost mantids in. I mean, they're just so amazing. Such cool bugs because literally they look like dead leaves on a plant. Like I said, there's no way unless we do some great signage on here, which we have to do, that anyone would look in here and think anything other than the fact that there's some dead leaves hanging on these sticks right here. So uh, nevertheless, I love them and I wanted to show you guys how awesome they are. Again, it's always awesome to see Ivy or any of my animal shed, but in particular, green anaconda. And the rest of the day was absolutely amazing too. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. As a matter of fact, if you did enjoy it, here's a playlist of me doing a bunch of different big snakes and big reptiles and so on like that. Up here, can you do me a favor? Subscribe to my podcast channel. You guys know I put a lot of work into that. Over here, you can subscribe to this vlog channel please turn your post notifications on have an absolutely wonderful day remember be kind to someone and i promise i'll see you tomorrow